Hi, thank you for your patience and tuning back in. I'm, uh, I've done most of my teaching in the classroom, so I'm kind of new to this online stuff, and especially putting myself and my lectures on video. So with this next segment and doing this poem, I need to connect to a YouTube video, and I wasn't sure how to do that live. I think I know, but it might take a little bit of a moment to make our segue between me talking with a PowerPoint and then clicking into the video. So until I learn this, I appreciate your patience. We're gonna talk about two poems, Ozymandias by Percy Bessie Shelley and On a Stupendous Leg of Grandis by Horace Smith. Those poems are related. Um, Percy Bessie Shelley, who looks much better than Horace Smith in these pictures here, it's because um, they're at different times of their lives, but um, they were contemporaries. They went to Oxford together. Percy Bessie, born in 1792 to, in the English countryside to a very wealthy family, expected him to go into business, but instead he was a artist, a poet, a writer, which um, caused them to act to kick him out of the house at one point because he wasn't following the family plan. Still educated in Oxford. One of the things that college boys liked to do back then was to compete uh, in horses and hunting and sailboat racing and even in poetry. So his friend at the time was Horace Smith and the two had decided that they were going to compete on writing a poem about Ozymandias to see who could get it published first. Percy won a month ahead of time before Horace. And after you see Horace's poem, maybe we can decide whether or not Horace read Percy before he wrote his. So what brought this poet competition on? I'll tell you. They were studying in their history class at Oxford. They were reading an excerpt from a philosopher from ancient Greece. The philosopher's name was Didorus Siculus. And he wrote about a statue of a pharaoh named Ramsay II that ruled Egypt in the years from about 1279 BCE to about 1213. It was a pretty long reign. The reason why they were studying this in their history class is because this was at a time where the British Empire was expanding through imperialism and colonization. They were digging up the remains of this statue of Ramses II and they were carting it from Egypt to the um, National Museum in England. And that's why they were looking at this. It's very dry, the excerpt from uh, De Doris's book. So this is what it says. One of these made in a sitting posture is the greatest in all Egypt, the measure of his foot exceeding seven cubits. This piece is not only commendable for its greatness, but admirable for its cut and workmanship and the excellency of the stone. In so great a work, there is not to be discerned the least flaw or any blemish. Upon it, there is this inscription. I am Ozymandias, king of kings. If any would know how great I am and where I lie, let him excel me in my works. If you had known and had read this poem, Ozymandias, if you're a fan of Breaking Bad, and you uh, tuned into the second to last episode, which was called Ozymandias, you would have known exactly what happened to Walter White's empire. Reading that poem um, tells you, gives you again, sort of a moral or a lesson on civilization. So a lot of things, uh, also Adrian in Watchmen, uh, he goes by Ozymandias as well. And it's, you know, because of what the metaphor is. So anyhow, we're going, I'm, I'm not going to read this poem. I have a YouTube that's very good at uh, reciting it. So that's what we're going to look at right now. If I can get this keyed up, hopefully it'll play. <laughs>
I met a traveler from an antique land who said, two vast and trunkless legs of stones stand in the desert. Near them on the sand, half sunk, a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well those passions read, which yet survive stamped on these lifeless things, the hand that mocked them and the heart that fed. And on the pedestal these words appear, my name is Ozymandias, king of kings, look on my works ye mighty and despair. Nothing beside remains round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare. The lone and level sands stretch far away. Okay, so um, we're going to talk about this. We're going to go back through the poem and um, get a close reading on it and try to determine what it is that Percy Beshi Shelley is saying, and then we'll take a look at Horace Smith as well. <laughs> 